G'day possums on the bench today. As you can see, a couple of plunge saws, the Haikoki and the Metabo. Before we talk about the tools, let's talk about the names of these tools. Now, Metabo and Haikoki used to be separate companies, now they are the same. I'll give you a quick rundown on how this all works. This used to be called Hitachi. The company name is Hitachi Koki. Hitachi purchased Metabo in 2017. Metabo stayed being called Metabo everywhere, but Haikoki became Metabo HPT in the States. Metabo HPT means Metabo Hitachi Power Tool. Haikoki, the name comes from Hitachi and Koki put together Haikoki. This is the name that is used in the rest of the world. In 2017, investment firm KKR purchased Hitachi Koki, who owned Metabo, and since 2021 have been trying to sell it. They purchased it for $1.3 billion, if you want to know, and they've been trying to sell it for $2 billion. So what it means for you, the end consumer, this Metabo takes this battery, the CAS system batteries. This Haikoki, or Metabo HPT, if you're in the States, takes these multivolt batteries. Completely different battery systems. You'll see shortly that the tools are very similar, but the battery platforms are different. You cannot put this battery on that, and you can't put that battery on that. This is an 18 volt tool, this is an 18 volt battery, this is a 36 volt tool, this is an 18 volt and 36 volt tool. It will work on 18 volt tools, but it won't work on that 18 volt tool. Are you all with me so far? So basically, Metabo is still Metabo, the way it's always been, in that it's the same color, it's the same name, same batteries, that's one platform. This Haikoki, or Metabo HPT, uses these batteries, they're a separate platform from that, but this battery will work on anything that says Haikoki, Hitachi, or Metabo HPT, but it won't work on Metabo without the HPT. And just to ram it home, for those of you who think Metabo and Metabo HPT are the same thing and that the batteries are interchangeable, this is the Metabo battery, this is the Haikoki or Metabo HPT tool, and no way is that battery going on there. And this is the Metabo tool, this is the Haikoki battery, same deal, no way. Right, now that we've got that cleared up, let's take a look at the tools. Starting with the Metabo KT18 LTX 66BL 18 volt plunge saw. To change the blade on the Metabo, you bring up your depth setting to the red area here. With the picture of the blades, anywhere in that area is fine. Turn this dial, it pops out a small piece of plastic there. Place your tool on the edge of a bench or something similar. Use your thumb to unlock the plunge mechanism and plunge the tool until it clicks into place. The blade is now locked. The screw for changing your blade is accessible. The trigger can't be pulled. The Allen key for changing your blade is kept on the side of the tool. The plunge depth goes down to 66 millimeters. And there is a fine adjustment screw near the handle. To plunge the saw, push this lever forward with your thumb, releases the lock. You can then pull the trigger. It is variable speed, 1 through to 12, 1 being 2250 RPM and 12 being 5000. This lever here is your battery release. It has a bevel knob at the back and the front. The front bevel knob also has a button. Push it in and you will drop to minus 1. Pop it back up. It will pop out and go back to 0 degrees. The same system applies for the maximum bevel. Put your saw up to 45, it will automatically stop. Push in the button, you can now go past to 46 degrees. Go back, the button will pop back out, back at 45. There are also levers front and back for locking in a rip fence. And the base looks like this. More on that later. It has a dust port that locks in lots of different positions. Can also completely remove it. Now when it comes to the high Haikoki, Everything about it is identical to the Metabo, with the one exception of there is one thing this one doesn't need. Do you know what it is? You guessed it yet? Doesn't have the battery release lever here because these batteries don't need it. So that's the only visual difference, but the other differences are the speeds. One is 2500 on the saw and 12 is 5200. So this runs a little bit quicker. Why if everything else is the same, would they make this one run a little bit quicker, you ask? Because this saw is not 18 volt. This saw is a 36 volt tool. 
So it's the same body as the Metabo, but it's got something different under the hood. Now, what batteries are we gonna use? I've decided to use the best battery from each platform. So we've got the Metabo 5.5 amp power, seems to be the most powerful. I know there's a 10 amp power one that has a longer run time, but doesn't put out the same amount of current that this one can do. So this one will give you more power in high demand applications. Pretty much the same with this battery. It's a 21700 cell battery. So it's a bit more powerful than this 18650 cell one. So this is a four amp hour 36 volt battery, which is what this tool is, or an eight amp hour 18 volt battery. So those are the best batteries available for each tool and they're the ones we're gonna use. If you've got a problem with that, leave it down in the comments, but guess what, I don't care. This one has another trick up its sleeve when it comes to powering this tool, but we'll look at that after we do a few cuts. Now we are gonna rip 15 millimeters off the edge of this timber. This is framing timber, it's 45 millimeters thick. And I've got the saw set on about 48 there so the blade will just drop below our timber When it comes to doing full 45 degree bevels with track saws, it pays to clamp down your track. These slot underneath most guide rails and just give you that extra grip. This is a quick slide ratchet style. This is your classic F clamps sort of style with the screw. Now in that last shot, you may have noticed something extra hanging off the back of this high Kirky plunge saw. And that was this. If you haven't seen this before, it is an AC adapter to put on 36 volt high Kirky tools. Plug that on the back and now you can run all day and not have to worry about charging batteries. When I was using this, I'm sure it had a bit of a power boost. So a little bit quicker than using the battery and a bit more consistent. So if you're doing a lot of cuts, and you don't want to go through batteries or maybe you don't have a heap of batteries that is an option you can run it off ac power but i did notice it behaved a little odd on this adapter than it does with the batteries something interesting happens here with the high koki i'm going to pull the trigger and let you see the brake pretty quick if i pulse the trigger okay as you'd expect now when we take a look at it with the AC adapter. Brake doesn't work. Not only that, you can't pulse it. So if you start a cut, take your finger off and want to push, pull the trigger again, you have to wait for the blade to stop before you can pull the trigger. I'm pushing the trigger and pushing the trigger and pushing the trigger and pushing the trigger. So if you release the finger off the trigger slightly, the blade cuts out, power cuts to the blade. I'm pulsing it backwards and forwards and it's not until the blade fully stops that it kicks in again. Odd. So is 36 volt heavier than 18 volt? Let's take a look. 4.3 kgs and 4.45 kgs. 
So 150, well, about 140 grams heavier that one was. Battery wise, these batteries, that ones that I've been using are basically the same weight. They're both just under a kg. So you're looking at nearly five and a half kgs to run this beast and about 150 grams less for that one. On the bottom, they are both the same as well, of course. And they have a track down the side for the Metabo rails, the Haikoki rails, the Makita rails, Hill T, Festool, Milwaukee, all run on this outer rail. But there's also a thinner rail here, which is for Bosch and Mafal track saws. And the adjustment that keeps your tool tight and straight is run by a dial on the top here that moves both ends at once and both track styles at once. Pretty cool. I like the length of the Metabo track here, the 1600 long one. Gives you a bit more extra overhang at the ends compared to a 1.4 meter track like the Milwaukee and the Makita ones are. However, if you stuck two 1600s together, you end up with like 3.2 meters, which is a bit too big for doing sheet goods. So it's, it's kind of an awkward size. It's good by itself. Add them together, not that much good. But you can add a short one, such as this 800 millimeter long one, but that brings you to 2.4 meters, which is the exact length of a sheet. So once again, a little odd, not that great, but they do have nice connectors, which slot in like so, nice and easy. And then you do up these cam screws here. Just give them a tweak and you're locked in. It's pretty good. It's better than having to flip the track over like you do with the Makita and the Milwaukee ones, a bit more solid. Although, Metabo, I have an issue because this one has a slightly different profile. This one has a sloped side and a grooved side. This one does not. They're both basically just sloped, I think. And this doesn't fit. It will not go in there. It's too tight, it's too narrow. No matter which way you put this upside down, wherever, it will not go in this track. So I don't know if this is an older track and it, they've changed the design. So it's a bit annoying because you get one of those, you think it's going to fit in here. And it doesn't. Now Metabo also make a 2.5 meter track, which I also think is a little bit of an odd size. You know, I want a bit more than 50 mil hanging over each end. And they also do a 3.1 meter. I like the long tracks because it means you can put something like this, this behemoth of a Makita, 270 millimeter blade. I can put that on the track and get the good run in that you need because you can't plunge this. Well, you can, but you know, it doesn't have a plunge mechanism. So you need to come into the front of your piece of timber. So you want this on the track, but off the timber. So you want that nice run in from the track. And with that 1600, it gives you that option. Now the max depth of cut of these tools is 66 millimeters, but that is without the track. It's a bit annoying that they say the number without the track because these are track saws after all. And most of the time people are going to be using them on tracks because they're not that good to use, to be honest, if they're not on a track. If you're using a saw not on a track all the time, get a circular saw. <laughs> circular saws are much better to use if you're not using a track. So even though it's 66, it's really only about 61 on the track. And these have differing numbers in manuals, I've noticed. This says um, 43 on a 45 degree, and this says 45. Whichever one it is, that's not on the track. So once it's on the track, you are not going to be able to cut framing timber in this part of the world with these tools. Even though I know they're not designed for framing timber, they're designed for sheet goods like ply and MDF and laminates and stuff like that. But if you're like me, you want as much depth of cut you can all the time and you want to know that you can grab any saw pretty much and cut through some framing timber. So you won't be able to do it on a 45. All the knobs and everything on the Metabo are red, all the ones on the Haikoki are green. And then there's one other last difference. Take a look at the plunge stops. We have GR on the Haikoki, which stands for guide rail. And we have FS. Why is this got guide rail? Well, this one's done in English. And this one is still sticking with the German. So FS stands for Führungssystem, Guidance System. Führungssystem, Guidance System. Thank you, Miss Google. Something I've been using while I've been recording these plunge saw videos is this. It's a Metabo cordless Bluetooth starter for a VAC. So basically, if you've got a corded VAC, it's pity that they um, printed the name up the wrong way for the plug. Anywho. Plug it in that way and the name's upside down. Hmm. Plug that in the wall, plug your vac into there, hook this around the end of the hose of your vac or around your tool there for instance. Better to do it on the vac because then when you take the vac off one tool, stick it on another tool, it's always there ready to go, just make sure it's right near the end. 
And with the vibration from the tool when you pull the trigger, it triggers this, which triggers this, which turns on your vac. Pretty damn cool, eh? So you don't have to keep turning your vac on and off manually. The tool will do it for you. But of course it only works on vacs that plug into the wall. So it ain't going to work on any cordless only vacs. So that's quite a cool bit of kit. Quite a good idea. You can start them as well just by pushing the button. You don't have to do it via vibration. So if you want to use the vac just to clean up the floor, you don't want to walk over to the vac, bang, push the button, away you go. I'll see if I can find some links to those and I'll stick them down in the description. So which of these two is the best? Well, I have borrowed both of these tools and if the person I borrowed them from said to me, tools, it's your lucky day, I don't need two plunge saws, which one of these two would you like? I would choose the High Koki. And that would be based on the fact that it's a bit more powerful. You can run it on AC if you want. And like most people, I've already got the batteries for it. <laughs> and that is, you know, a huge selling point for most people. You're not going to buy one of those if you've got the batteries for those and vice versa. You're going to buy whichever one's easiest to run with the system you already have. And for me, that would be High Koki. But if I was buying them from scratch, it would definitely be the High Koki anyway. Because, like I say, it's more powerful. And these batteries, not a big fan of the way that they go on the tools. If you're not familiar with Metabo batteries and these CAS, which stands for Cordless Alliance System, which is lots of different tool brands that use this same battery system. Because they do that, they have come up with a way of attaching the batteries. It doesn't have anything on the battery, no, nothing to release your battery. So they have to build it into the tools, which works okay on some tools. It's a bit odd on others. On the Metabo here, you bung in the tool, you push this down, doesn't like eject it or in any way the battery doesn't even move you just hold that down and pull it off and so it sort of requires another hand because if you're holding this and you had the high koki one you just pull the battery off like that with the two little buttons on the side but this if you're holding it you've got to get your hand up there up here and down here so how do you do it so it always requires in my opinion more hands than humans have. It's not so bad on smaller handheld tools such as this rivet gun. Once you get the hang of it, because they're rubberized on the bottom, you can just sort of put the tools on like this. And when you want to take them off, you sort of do it in reverse. <laughs> it's a bit cumbersome, but yeah, you sort of get used to it a bit, I guess. But to me, it's still nowhere near as nice as pretty much every other battery that has a dedicated button on the front or on the sides to take them off. This video hasn't been super in-depth, but if you want to see a more in-depth review of the Metabo with more about the features and the cut quality and see it up against the Milwaukee to see how well it does against that, then take a look up in the top corner and down in the description. If you're interested in these two tool platforms, I have more reviews from both of them coming up shortly. So if you're interested, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And there's also Patreon down there in the description as well. And until next time, have a good one, guys. And I'll see you all on the next one. Cheers.